Today, we'll be discussing the exciting possibility of witnessing Starship's historic orbital class debut takeoff in the near future. However, there is one major uncertainty that has been looming over this event, SpaceX's FAA launch license. Fortunately, it seems that this issue may soon be resolved as the company is expected to receive the license by April 14th. If this happens, it could mean that Elon Musk's prediction of a late April launch will finally come to fruition. So let's dive right into today's episode of Great SpaceX. This is it, the moment we've all been waiting for. According to two reports, SpaceX's Starship could be getting a launch license from the FAA within two weeks. This is the final hurdle before SpaceX can legally launch its massive rocket from South Texas on its first orbital flight test. Dutch Satellites, a Netherlands National Space Museum worker, who usually tweets about space history and the occasional insight into the industry, shared that the FAA was in the final stages of finishing its launch license. They also claimed SpaceX should have it in hand in under a fortnight. And for those of you who don't know, a fortnight means two weeks. Oh, how everything comes full circle. He shared that this news comes from private conversations with people at SpaceX and NASA. This was especially corroborated by Christian Davenport, space reporter for the Washington Post, and don't forget the author of The Space Barons. Davenport stated, unless there's an unforeseen problem, SpaceX should have the launch license for the Starship debut launch by April 14th or thereabouts. As we know, last month, Musk also announced that SpaceX should have a launch license from the FAA in a few weeks, and if all goes to plan, his guess was a launch during the third week of April. The joke being that the third week of April contains April 20th, or 420. He has said before that he never tries to line up these numbers, but they just always come coincidentally. But does this actually mean that a Starship orbital launch will take place in two weeks? Well, just because SpaceX has a launch license doesn't mean they will be 100% ready to launch immediately. However, the company has been hard at work for over a year preparing for this launch, and the rocket stages Booster 7 and Ship 24 have been thoroughly tested for this attempt. There's a high likelihood that this orbital launch attempt will take several tries. Like any new rocket in development, there are plenty of unknowns, and even with all the testing SpaceX has done, once you attempt to lift off from Earth, all cards are off the table. In any case, adding a launch license from the FAA is an excellent sign that Starship is ready to launch. Once the rocket is fully stacked, SpaceX can proceed with attempting to launch. Wishing all the best to the team over at SpaceX. Next up, we have NASA Human Spaceflight Chief Kathy Luters announcing her retirement at the end of this month. Kathy Luters will step down as Associate Administrator of NASA's Space Operations Mission Directorate at the end of April, the agency announced on March 27th. Five-time astronaut Ken Bowersox will succeed her, transitioning from his current position as the Directorate's Deputy Head. Thank you for the opportunity of a lifetime, and I look forward to seeing all the wonderful things NASA and the Space Operations team will accomplish, Luters said in a tweet on Tuesday, March 28th. Kathy is a tremendous public servant and a trailblazer, not only serving as the first woman to head space operations for NASA and the first woman to manage our human spaceflight program, but also championing a new way of doing business in low Earth orbit. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said in a statement, The public-private commercial model Kathy and her team helped pioneer will return humanity to the moon and prepare us for our next giant leap, the first crewed mission to Mars, Nelson added. Looters began her 31-year NASA career at the White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico, where she served as depot manager for the Space Shuttle's Orbital Maneuvering and Reaction Control Systems. She served in various positions in the International Space Station program and also managed NASA's commercial crew program at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. She earned a variety of awards and recognitions during her time at NASA, including the Distinguished Presidential Rank Award and the Distinguished Service Medal. Luters also won a 2020 Woman in Aerospace Leadership Award and a 2021 American Astronomical Society Spaceflight Achievement Award and a 2022 Space Pioneer Award from the National Space Society. She was inducted into the Space and Satellite Hall of Fame in 2021. Bowersox will take over as head of space operations on May 1st. His space experience, 
includes commanding ISS Expedition 6 and two missions to service the Hubble Space Telescope. Back on Earth, Bowersox has also served as Director of Flight Operations at NASA's Johnson Space Center and was Chair of the Human Exploration and Operations Committee on the NASA Advisory Council. Ken has been instrumental to advancing NASA's goals and missions in low Earth orbit and beyond, and I know space operations will be in good hands under his leadership, Nelson said. And finally, we have a bit of sad news to end on for today's episode. Virgin Orbit officially shutters its space launch operations operations. Virgin Orbit's days of slinging satellites into space aboard aircraft-launched rockets have come to an end Thursday. After six years in the business, Virgin's satellite launch subsidiary has announced via SEC filing that it does not have the funding to continue operations and will be shuttering for the foreseeable future, per CNBC. Nearly 90% of Virgin Orbit's employees, 675 people in total, will be laid off immediately. Virgin Orbit was founded in 2017 for the purpose of developing and commercializing Launcher 1, a satellite launch system fitted under a modified 747 airliner, dubbed Cosmic Girl. The system was designed to put 500 pounds of CubeSats into low Earth orbit by firing them in a rocket from said airliner, flying at an altitude of 30,000 to 50,000 feet. Despite a string of early successes, both in terms of development milestones and expanding service contracts with the UK military, Launcher 1's first official test in May of 2020 failed to deliver its simulated payload into orbit. A second attempt the following January in 2022, however, was a success with the launch of 10 NASA CubeSats into LEO, as was Virgin Orbit's first commercial satellite launch that June. It successfully sent seven more satellites into orbit in January of 2022 and quietly launched Space Force assets during the July of the same year. Out of six total flights between 2020 and 2023 that Virgin Orbit made, made, only four were successful. The most recent attempt was dubbed the Start Me Up event and was supposed to mark the first commercial space launch from UK soil. Despite the rocket successfully separating from its parent aircraft, an upper stage anomaly prevented the rocket's payload from entering orbit. It was later determined that a $100 fuel filter had failed, resulting in the fault. Virgin Group founder Sir Richard Branson threw upwards of $55 million to the sinking space company in recent months, but Start Me Up's embarrassing failure turned out to be the final straw. On March 16th, Virgin Orbit announced an operational pause and worker furlough for its roughly 750 employees as company leadership scrambled to find new funding sources. The company extended the furlough two weeks later and called it quits on Thursday. Unfortunately, we've not been able to secure the funding to provide a clear path for this company. Virgin CEO Dan Hart said in an all-hands call obtained by CNBC, We have no choice but to implement immediate, dramatic, and extremely painful changes. Impacted employees will reportedly receive severance packages, according to Hart, including a cash payment, continued benefits, and a direct pipeline to Virgin Galactic's hiring department. Virgin Orbit's two top executives will also receive golden parachute severances, which were approved by the company's board conveniently back in mid-March, right when the furloughs first took effect. Well, there you have it. That's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.